the dark woods off Florida's highways. It was down dirt roads like this that seven men met the madness of one angry woman. Lee Wernos murdered them, robbed them, and then drove home in their cars. Those men were shot just, just shot in self defense boom, 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 you know. They weren't cut up, they weren't sliced up, no OJ jazz, you know. And he said, I did the most horrendous crime in the whole wide world. Not true? I guess not. All they were was shot and left. If it was a horrendous crime, why didn't I shoot them between the eyes, cut their penis off, stick it in their mouth, you know, do all kinds of gross stuff? All they were was shot and left, you know? She's been called the damsel of death and the hooker from hell. But embellishment aside, the story of history's first female serial killer is macabre enough, even without its supporting cast of characters. Oh, 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 yes. I'm a public defender. First, there's Lee Wernos's lawyer. She's given him the job of getting her to the electric chair. If you want to plead out, that's what I'm all about. Just sign this no contest plea. Then there's the serial killer's new mother. She first met Lee after her arrest and then legally adopted her. Sheba. You know, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and so we feel it was him prompting us that this person really needed help, and she had nobody, and just reach out to her. So we did. I met her in a bar. And there's Lee's gay lover, who betrayed her to the police. We were sitting on the floor watching TV, and she just come out and said, I have something to tell you. And I asked her what, and she said that she had shot and killed a man that day. Lee, it sounds like you've been betrayed by everyone. That's right, I was. I was, that's why I don't care if I'm executed and leave this planet. If anyone was destined to end up here on death row, it was probably Lee Wuornos. Psychologists sketch a portrait of a damaged person with a lurid history of abuse that began in childhood. Abandoned by her teenage mother when she was just six months old, Lee was raised by her alcoholic grandmother and a cruel grandfather who regularly beat her with his belt buckle. When she was two, her father committed suicide in jail where he was doing time for kidnapping and raping a child. By 13, she'd been raped and was pregnant. At 14, she quit school. And when her grandfather kicked her out of home, Lee Wernos' life on the road began. From age 15, Lee Wernos worked prostitution's lowest and most dangerous trade. A hitchhiking hooker turning tricks from exit to exit on Florida's interstate highways. Basically, I'd say I had five to six guys per day interested. They could be interested in 30, they could be interested in 40, they could be interested for 100. I wasn't uh, too high priced so I could keep the customers satisfied and, you know. That all changed when she turned 33. After years of abuse and degradation at the hands of men, Lee Wernos started evening the score. The killings all began like this. A middle-aged man pulled over to pick up Lee Wernos. That's the first of just two facts on which everyone agrees. The way Lee tells it, she was just a hooker trying to turn a trick, and the men knew it. But the state of Florida maintains she tricked her victims by posing as a damsel in distress. The men thought they were helping her out. Either way, the second fact on which everyone agrees is that Lee Wernos shot them dead. Maybe you were just born bad. Boy, you... I don't know about you. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. No, I wasn't born bad. You guys got it. See, I'm trying to tell you, man, they lied. They lied so bad to you all. But you've been convicted of killing seven men. Everybody's looking at the number. Does that not... You, you killed well, seven men, seven strangers. Does that not make you a serial killer? So I didn't kill them every day, did I? Did I go out there every day and say, hmm, I'm going to kill... If I did, there would well, be Well, no, hundreds. it took you 12 months. Yeah. 
And, it, and, and that's a hell of a lot of men I went through before the next jerk came along and I used protection, like a condom. So it was self-defense? Self yeah. Well, the first one, perhaps, the second, maybe, but so seven what? times? So what? Lee Wuornos began the last day of her miserable life on the road here, ordering her first beer at 11 in the morning. Close to broke, as usual, it was Lee's style to hustle quarters for the jukebox so she could listen to her favourite song. On this day, that was made easier by two undercover cops. They struck up a conversation with her, bought her some more beer, and then convinced her to step outside. I'm digging up bones, I'm digging up bones. Lee was prepared for anything but the six Florida police officers who arrested her. It was from this point the story of the first female serial killer becomes truly perplexing. First, her videotaped confession. Go ahead and put the electric chair to me. I should have never done it, she told police. But by the time of her trial, Lee was pleading self-defense. She loved you, didn't she? Yes. She said she'd do anything for you, didn't she? Yes, she did. Her case wasn't helped when Tyria Moore, now very much her ex-lover, turned star witness for the prosecution. And in order for her to say what she wanted her to, you lied to her, right? Yes. But it gets worse. Tyria had another deal going with the arresting police. They were trying to sell Hollywood the movie rights to Lee Wernos's life and crazy times. Why did you lie to her about those number of things? Because I wanted her to keep talking about the offences so I would be cleared. District Attorney Rick Ridgway is one of the only officials willing to talk about the Wernos case anymore. The police certainly won't, out of sheer embarrassment. There was a tremendous amount of, of um, almost frenzy about the case and everybody wanted to get uh, a scoop on the next guy about the case and there were so many people who were willing to pander to that in order to be the one who gets quoted or who gets the movie made about them. People from your own sheriff's office? Well, unfortunately, yes, they did. As the prosecutor, were you dismayed by that? Well, to put it mildly, we went through the roof when we found out about it. In the end, it was only the producers of this American TV movie who were able to cash in on Lee's story. Tyria and the police's conspiracy to get rich quick came to nothing once they were caught. But that hasn't stopped Lee Wernos suspecting that someone, somewhere, wants to exploit her name. It's making me get bitter, evil, angry. I've never been before in my life. Worse than even out there with those men. This is evil, what those people have done to me. Do you feel anger or even hatred towards men? I never hated men, but now I do. I mean, not all. I have a category. I hate those male... God. I hate those male... ...cops. Real bad, because they're dirt balls. The cops, the judges, the lawyers, they're all male. I have made peace with my lord, and I have asked forgiveness. The final twist in this already mad tale was when Lee Wernos decided to plead no contest to the remaining six murder charges. I sentence you in case number 91-463 to death for the murder of Troy Burris. Her lawyer, Steve Glazer, found himself in the bizarre position of helping his client take the express route to the electric chair. County case number, I sentence you to death for the murder of David Spears. Thank you. And uh, probably see, uh, I'll be up in heaven while y'all are rotting in hell. In effect, though, weren't you trying to kill your client? It's not what I was trying to do, okay? Uh, it's what she wanted to have done to her. She was tired of being in the spotlight. She was tired of reporters and uh, police and lawyers, everyone making a career off of her. She did not like the man-hating 
killer label. She didn't like the lesbian killer angles. She didn't like what people were saying about her. And she knows if she has to go to trial five more times, she's going to be in the, for the next 10 years. Do you still believe she was competent to make that decision? Without a doubt. OK, there will be an automatic appeal. You have the right to an appeal. Mr. Glazer, is that going to be handled by you? May or the your wife and kids uh, get raped. I would ask that uh, you would point right. the public defender's office. OK, I will I'll appoint the public defender's office uh, to handle the appeal. There's one other thing that I want to say that I think needs to be said. I know I was raped. You weren't nothing but a bunch of stump. Therefore, these proceedings are now Putting completed. somebody who was raped right. to death? Do you still want the chair? There's no sense in having me tormented for the rest of my life when I don't deserve to be tormented. So I did what anybody else would do. And so there's only clemency or the chair. You make your pick, people, because that's the only way it's going to be. Why did you adopt Leigh Wernos? For one reason and one reason only. We wanted her to know what it felt like to be part of a family. Born again Christian Arlene Prawley has a fondness strays. for adopting yeah, stray animals. When she adopted Lee, she planned a life together on her farm. Now she'd be happy just to keep her alive. That's oh, it. Look, okay, that's look. about enough. There you go. <laughs> well, how, tell me this how did you counsel Lee? I, to I told her to go for the life in prison. I told her that that would be the best. I told her that God could use her within the prison to help other girls that were hurting, maybe didn't have a relationship with Jesus, and that she could really be used mightily there. And we fought bitterly over it. She said that no human being had the right to tell another human being what to do with their life. Stop the murders, deter the crimes away. Not much phases the singing lawyer, Steve Glazer. Not the three heart attacks he's suffered since taking on this case, nor the criticism he's endured for seeking Lee Wernos's execution. And a rich man's never died upon the chair. Has this case been good for your career? No. But that's life. You know, you take Obladila, life goes on, you try something else. Is there anyone in this cast of characters who isn't a little bit crazy? A little bit eccentric? I think you got to be a little while to be in this business. If Steve Blazer has done his job, Lee Wernos could be executed in this chair within three years. She's waived her right to appeal. If he hears no last minute stays from the governor's office, the electrode then is placed on top of the inmate's head. It's an actual cap with an electrode inside. It's secured onto his head. One of these electrodes here is then fastened onto the top of the headpiece. <laughs> Alone and lost in her own nightmare, oh, Lee Wernos is an American horror story. She could escape death row, but her bitterness and hate will see Lee become the first woman in over a century to be executed in Florida. Aren't you afraid? No, I'm not afraid. I know where I'm going. I'm going to be with the Lord. Thank you, Take too. Take care of yourself and tell everybody else to Do you want to die? You want to? Oh, man, if I, if I was to uh, leave this planet, it wouldn't be no big deal to me, because uh, this is a wicked, wicked world. Wicked world. Hello, I'm Alison Langdon. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.